If you're a multi-dog household and you have gone on vacation to the beach, one of the best things that you can do is to give your dogs individual time with you out at the beach. You want to make sure, of course, you are accommodating their desire to go into the water or not go into the water. But you also, even if you have dogs who have the exact same personality, who both either love to be in the water or don't want to be in the water, is really valuable for you to give them their own individualized time. Having time with you alone is very, very helpful. And for some of you, you will be a couple and then each of you will be able to take a dog and it won't be as big of a deal. But Even so, I highly recommend having one-on-one time with your dog. Going to the beach is a bonding experience with your dog. Lucy loves to go in the water. She loves to play in the waves. Gemma is not having it, even still not having it with the ocean. She loves every other type of swim, not the ocean. And Ember is practically a cat in a dog's body. She does not want the water at all. So for me, it's both practical, but it's also a really good bonding experience for me to be able to take my dogs individually. And so I take my dogs out together and then I'll bring them back and I'll take Lucy out to go play. We'll go run in the ocean, play in the waves. We'll run on the sand. We'll do all the things she loves to do. I'll bring her back in and let her rest while I take Gemma out. And that gives them individual rest time. It gives them space. Traveling can be tough on a dog. It can take a lot of their energy out, especially if they're introverted dogs, they may not want to be super social. So giving them time to rest without having to worry about anything else is very, very helpful. And then it's bonding time. I get to explore what they want to do and how they want to do it. I get to make sure I have one-on-one time with them where I can give them lots of cuddles and praise and talk directly to them because my dogs are always together. So having some individual time is very helpful. And then I also get to work on different skills with them. Gemma's not sure about the waves yet. She's nervous about being by the ocean. And so I have to work on it. I'm working on coaxing her to get a little bit closer every single time. And I get close, but I'm still working on it. With Lucy, we're teaching her other types of skills. I'm working on other tricks and commands with her. And so it's a very good, valuable time to be in an environment with a lot going on. You have the waves of the ocean. You have all of the birds. You have all of the people, all of the children, all of the other dogs. There's a lot of potential distractions. So being able to go out one-on-one, now I can focus very heavily on that dog, on their training, and on what's going on around them and any potential triggers. Sometimes they're really, really good. Sometimes they're a little nervous about certain things and we can work on that or we can determine if it's just maybe an off day for them. So having that individualized time at the beach is the best thing that I can do for my dogs and probably one of the best things you can do for your dogs as well. I highly recommend giving it a try. One thing that I have found is that as you're traveling, You have to be smart about how you do this. So if you have other people that your dogs can hang out with, great. If you don't, you either have to make sure your dog is like super well behaved and you can put them in a room and close the door or bring a crate with you. My dogs are crate trained. And so I started bringing our crates on vacation because it gives them a private place to be. It's like bringing their bedroom with us so that when they get tired, when they get exhausted, they can go put themselves in their crates. Gemma did that this morning. Gemma has, poor Gemma, she's laying right under my feet and she has worked herself to pieces. She's done so much exercise. She's played so, so hard. And she keeps putting herself to bed to have alone time, private time without all of the people. Um, I'm staying with my mom and my aunt was here for a couple of days, but my sister and her children keep coming over. And so it's very busy in this house a lot of the time. So Gemma just needs a little bit of alone time and she'll go all the way downstairs to her room and she will... She will put herself in the crate. So having that there is not only kind for them, but it's functional for us. So I can just pop them right in their crate, make sure they're nice and contained. I don't have to worry about anything, especially because we had um, some issues with the way the door locked. So we've had people who were not us coming here when we were not here and the dogs were. And thankfully, everything was in their crates and nothing was a problem, but having that is a really good safety measure. Being able to bring that with me and then me manage things by myself, especially if I'm traveling by myself, is incredibly helpful. So give your dog as much individualized time as possible when you're at the beach. Right now we're on rest time. We've been playing hard all day long. We went out for a huge run and then we went to play and then my brother-in-law took both of the girls for a big run. So they're very tired right now and it's a good downtime for us after our individualized time with mom and with other people, other socialization that we've been practicing along on this trip. Let us know your tips for traveling with your dogs. There's a full playlist down below on how you can level up your travel with your dog from hotel reviews and 
places you can rent, all the way to how to get your dog in a car and to travel really well, linked down below. And we've got a puppy who is now awake. And we've got um, a full playlist on how to document your dog's travel so that you've got great video and photos from your vacation for your pups. We'll see you in tomorrow's episode.